January 14, 1978, Florida. A man named Ted drives up to a girl's dormitory where he tries to meet one of the female students, but after noticing that he is being watched, he leaves. Later, he sneaks up to the house and stares out the windows, watching the girls inside. Then he returns at night to kill and maim several of them. For those who are more or less familiar with the history of serial killings in the United States, the short description of the plot above will be enough to understand which Ted the movie is about. Ted Bundy's attack on a girl's dormitory on the night of January 14 to 15 of 1978 is one of the most famous episodes of his atrocities, and it also gave the film its title. One of the surviving female students described the attacker to the police as a black mass. The film's director, Devaney Pin, dedicated the movie to the victims of serial maniacs, both those who died and those who survived, and she really did a very conceptual job. Instead of following the repeatedly traveled path and showing Ted Bundy as a charming manipulator, a victim of psychological trauma or a sick sadist, what means, in other words, making a movie about him, she really turned him into an inarticulate black mass, a faceless and unpredictable destructive force that cannot be understood. Ted, played by actor Andrew Sykes, is on screen for most of the movie, but almost always it's just some inarticulate part of him, the back of his head, his shoulder, his ear, his chin, his eyes. He is difficult to identify and seems to constantly elude the camera lens. The camera, in turn, looks as if through him, at those whose lives this dark cloud of chaos will touch in one way or another. Fifteen minutes of the movie are allocated for the peeping scene, in which we hear scraps of other people's conversations, see bits of other people's problems and worries, routine and even boring. The movie poster looks like it's an exploitation slasher, but the black mass was shot by a woman who has no desire to satisfy the low instincts of fans of such movies. In the only scene in which one of the girls is about to take a shower, her stripping suddenly turns into a bloody fantasy of Bundy, who imagines the girl tearing her skin off, ripping off her head and penetrating her neck with her hand. How's that for extreme nudity? In the final killing sequence, Pin fixates on the face of the sobbing girl or the naturalistic sounds of a log, Bundy's weapon of choice, landing on the heads of his victims. It's an effective approach that allows you to feel the pain, fear and acute senselessness of what's happening. The only thing that needs to be mentioned is that despite the clever concept and generally formidable realization, this is a distinctly B-grade movie, and it's not just about the budget. Devaney Pin is a thrash horror screen queen, for whom this is her full-length directorial debut, and she's cast actresses of the similar kind to play the roles of 20-something college girls. Almost all of them are between 30 and 40 years old, their appearance has been partly modified by plastic surgeons and not all of them have enough acting talent to behave naturally in front of the camera, so between the outer layer and the inner content of the black mass, sometimes there is still quite a noticeable dissonance which is still should be overcome, because this movie is worthy of at least respect.